uh, obvious that a lot of that uh, that I published then was lost art. The people don't understand now even how the transformer works, you know, and that's a shame that the power electronics people are, you know, uh, thinking that uh, transformer is just two pieces of wire on a magnetic core. And they don't distinguish uh, that uh, what is needed to be done to get a true uh, AC transformer. And I actually covered that in a first part, uh, first week in a first basic course. Uh, what I would like to encourage you, if you uh, don't have a means and uh, don't want to invest in all volume books, I will, I especially made a volume one and volume four. Volume one is where all this stuff about co converter topologies and magnetics is contained. And volume four it contains uh, uh, state space averaging and a number of uh, related patterns. So it's published as one. You can uh, order it at a heavy discount, you know. Uh, at, uh, yeah, uh, I, this. I, purchase, can, I purchase a bundle. Yeah, yeah, if you purchase a bundle, that's probably the best way because volume two and has a lot about measurements and uh, practical design. And volume three is all about different practical designs, including very first solar inverter that I made with the, uh, Alan Kokoni, who was then my employee, and we made a four kilowatt solar inverter back in 1977, 78. Okay, uh, enough for a plug, so let's go, let's go back to the continuation of presentation. And right now I will uh, share the screen as we had before, and I'll share this PowerPoint screen. So I hope now you can see. You see it all, right? Hello? Yes, yes, see yes. Okay, very good. So let's move on. I have uh, uh, now uh, one other blank screen here. And that is, so I showed you bi-directional version of this. Now let's show this, how this will look uh, in the opposite direction when we draw it. Okay, so so now we have a input inductor. Only one active switch. Capacitor. And This is a circuit which is looking backwards. I'll put the capacitor here because we don't have inductor anymore to filter it out. This is now positive voltage. And I draw the version intentionally, which is a positive input, positive output. Remember what we've done so far, if I use this previous version, it was a negative output to positive input. It was polarity inverting, just like original uh, Chu converter. But now we can have this version, which is positive input, positive output. And what is the voltage gain? It is one over one minus D times input voltage VG, and it is positive, okay? So it's a step up. Now, I hope you realize from power conversion viewpoint, we did the simple thing. And in fact, I published a paper with some of my, uh, uh, students at the time that we just said, hey, we replace this output inductor because it is, as we know, <laughs> inductor with the DC bias and air gap, and it's uh, destroying all inductance and so forth, it's useless. So therefore, replace it with a switch. What it does do now also eliminate the step down part, and it's just doing step up. So it's great to do step up if it is point uh, due to ratio. If it is a point at point nine due to ratio of this switch, this is one over point nine uh, minus one minus point nine one over point eight. Hey, it's stepping up ten times, stepping up. That's not bad, right? You get a large step up, and only three switches. Okay. And what is also important, it has a boost kind of characteristic. Why? Remember what is a characteristic of the boost? 
that output voltage is stress on output diode on a boost is never higher than the input voltage, never higher than the output voltage, sorry. So now let's point that out. If this is a, a voltage V on the output, when this switch is turned on, this voltage is reverse biased across this diode. So this diode sees the output voltage. And then when this uh, uh, is turned on into the opposite direction, when this one is on, guess what happens? This is circulating here. And what happens is that now this is turned on and, and this point becomes the ground. So this is the voltage stress on this switch equal to the output voltage. So whatever duty ratio you operate here, output voltage has the uh, output two diodes have the same voltage stress as their output voltage. That's not happening in any other converter, right? So that's good thing. What is the bad thing? You're charging this capacitor again, positive, negative, right? And just like in a true converter, you s this, uh, what happens, this uh, charging is this way. When I turn this switch on, uh, oh, now it's, now it's not turning this diode off. It is turning the diode on. So can you see that? Let's uh, look at a green one. So in this loop, this is shorted. Right, when this switch, so these two switches open like a transistor in series with the diode and uh, in this direction. So this is voltage bidirectional switch. So when this switch turns on, it forces the diode to turn on. See that? So therefore this discharging, is that going to be efficient? Absolutely not. Because what happens when you short, you're storing the charge during on time during off time of this switch, you're storing the charge and now suddenly you've decided, hey, I'm going to short it. Okay, this is still work as a, as a, a PWM converter. It can still do duty ratio control and everything else. But this is where for the first time we see we need a new switching method. PWM, passive modulated with a big inductor, a PWM inductor, which again has its own problems, has to be it is inefficient. It does work, but it has a problem. This here is a discharging here, right? In the output. And is there any way to fix it? I already showed you last time. What is the way to fix it? Anybody? Okay, I'll show you. Uh, let's shoot red color because very important. Remember I showed you last time? If I change this, this charge is going this way. This charge, this is discharging in itself, right? But, and that's of course, this discharge current is not helping anything, it's just loss. What if I move this here and ground point and move it to the output? <laughs> what happens to all that discharge which was useless? Send to the output, output is happy. Now you get all this extra charge and therefore the voltage on the output will drop and then your voltage uh, rating on this here. Remember I told you just that single change of topology by connecting this to the output, it will have, you know, 80% efficiency of original design might be 90% efficiency. But what is even better than this? We don't want this uh, discharge to be abrupt like this because we can make even this one very, very efficient. How are we going to do it? Put a little, little uh, inductance here. Why I say little? Because this inductance can be very small because uh, this resonance is dictated by one over square root of CR resonant capacitor and LR. 
Do you agree that I have a freedom of two components, LR and CR, to uh, do the re to define the resonance in this circuit? Resonance by itself is not lossy. That means that this discharge will not be lossy. It's not shorted. There will be a current, a resonant current going in here, but it is not lossy. It's simply charge and resonant discharge. Charge, PWM charge and resonant discharge. Okay. And of course, input inductor goes here. So that's one thing. Uh, so uh, let me point another beauty, which is not visible initially. And that is this. Uh, let me pick up one color which will stand out. And, uh, you know, uh, I'm thinking there is a gold color or uh, yeah, uh, let's do this uh, green color. This here is a polarity inverting, pola polarity non-inverting, like original boost. What happened with the original boost? Can an original boost take a positive polarity to get, get, get a negative polarity and output? Tell me. Can you do it? Yes, no. Come on, guys, I want to see everybody. Yes, no. No? Yes. 